What up, fam? It's Aslan. A uh, quick little note before uh, we roll the podcast out for the day. Corey and I recorded uh, in person in Tallahassee yesterday, uh, but in the evening before uh, the Duke game went final. And we do talk a, a good amount about basketball. It's one of the first things we talk about at the top of the show. It's one of the questions uh, that the subscribers asked us. So uh, do bear with us uh, when we talk about that. Again, we did not... Uh, know that Duke was going to lose to Clemson of all teams. Uh, there's a whole lot of football, though, in the podcast, I promise. I know that's uh, more important to a lot of you folks, which is totally cool. I get it. Uh, look in the item description. There'll be the timestamp of when we talk about football, uh, so you can jump right to it if you'd like. Let's go. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hunchavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. I'm Aslan Hunchavandi. He is Corey Clark. We're in the Midtown offices, Tallahassee, Florida. Warchant.com, the ultimate seminal sports source. He's the lead writer, senior writer. Lead columnist, senior columnist. Right, all that. All that. All that. I'm director of digital media. Use the promo code WARCHANT30. Gets you 30 free days of access to WARCHANT.com. Phone line's back open. It's the off season now. 850-792-5730. 850-792-5730. We'll take some of the best phone calls uh, in the latter half of the week. Uh, maybe we'll start it back up next week. We'll, we'll try to compile some questions now, hopefully, in the... Let it rip at the end of next week. Uh, we'll do some Renegade Express questions maybe a little bit today and a little bit tomorrow. Um, don't forget our good friends at Zaxby's got really good food for you. Right now they got that uh, Caribbean jerk uh, filet sandwich there as well as the uh, boneless wings. I mean, just throw it in the bowl, spin it around, mm-hmm. let it let it drip. Right. Throw some of that drip oh, on it. yeah. Are you blue cheese or like a ranch guy if you had um, – like Caribbean jerk wings, would you would you would you dip them in uh... blue cheese? Well, both really. Like when I get order wings at a restaurant or at Zaxby's because that's a restaurant, I, I like to get both and like one and one I'll eat one flap or flap I'll eat in the ranch. The other one I'll dip in the blue cheese. I thought we did we had this discussion at one point. They're both. It's both. It's really? flat and flap. Yeah. Oh, I've never I've never, never called it a flap in my life, but there are yeah. people that call them flaps. Well, I would have this argument in Mississippi, like if you. What's the, the 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 rhyme about woodchucks doing something to wood? What do they do to the wood, the woodchucks? How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? So what's the actual verb? What is the wood? Chuck? Right. Yeah. In Mississippi, they're like, it's chunk. Like chunk plays, plays of 25 yards or more. They're like, chunk it. I'm like, what do you mean? No, it's chuck it. And everybody's like, you're wrong. I'm like, I am so not wrong about it. They say this. you chunk the ball? Chunk it, yeah, down oh. the field. See, and I've always, I've never called them uh, crank phone calls. I've always called them prank. I'm the, yeah, you, yeah, I heard that. But Those some are, people call them cranks. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with, with this, with our language. I don't know. I, mean, I guess it's regional, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And I always called sodas Cokes. I still do. Right. If I'm getting a Diet Pepsi, I call it a Coke. All right. So, yeah, sit down with your friends. Talk about life at Zaxby's. It is indescribably good. Tweet at us as well. Wake up or chant. We will give you a shout out. All right. So um, there's a basketball game going on later today. But even more importantly, it sounds like you, myself, and I are going to start our weekly tennis uh, battles later right. on. These people are listening to this. I'm pretty stoked. That's much you. more important than the, than the basketball game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't wait, buddy. I can't wait to see what I do to you two guys. So, like, I and I going to, you know, it's going to be two on one, or are we going to cycle in whoever's like the loser? I feel like, like we should in. hit around and see who's the best of the bunch, and then it would just be, you know, we could do one versus two, we could do one versus one, somebody sits out, we could just hit around like normal folks. I don't know. Ira's got that racquetball pedigree and background, a little bit nervous. I think going to be a ringer out there. I feel like we can make him run, though, and yeah. that's a wrap. You know what I mean? Like, we could just hit drop shot after drop shot. What's he going to do? Right, right. He's going to be like, ah, oh, too good. He's more a Too lineman, good. less linebacker. Like yeah. He's, he's, he's got a that, baseliner for sure, he's got I think. That good first step, good power, point of attack, but you can get him on the run. Yeah. You know, further away from the line of scrimmage, a little bit, a little bit weaker. All right. Uh, you want to go ahead and dive right into basketball then? You know, give it a little brief overview. Uh, there's some questions from the Renegade Express I think we should take. Uh, can maybe pivot us into some pretty decent uh, football conversation, which is what the people want. But uh, 7 o'clock, Florida State takes on the defending national champs, Virginia, uh, here in Tallahassee at the Tucker Civic Center. Florida State's number nine, if I'm not mistaken. They're going for their 17th ACC victory in their last 19 conference tilts. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, Virginia, I think, coming on uh, two straight losses. They lost, I think, three of their last five. Uh, but, man, they still are who they are. They still have the number one scoring defense in the nation and 
keep opponents to the you know the worst field goal percentage in the nation as well. So yeah, hooray. yeah, it's, it's what they do. They don't score uh, as much as they have in the past. They lost. I mean, they lost some uh, NBA guys, some high level NBA guys. So obviously that's that's hurting them on that end. But they're always going to be good defensively, and the games are always going to be a grind. Like it's just going to be a it's going to be like a root canal. It's going to be a dentist trip. So a trip to the dentist, you just hope you can win. Um, and it'll be interesting because last time they played Virginia, and uh, Leonard talked about this on Monday, you know, they, they beat Virginia. They were the last team to beat Virginia in the ACC tournament last year. Um, now, there were four other teams that almost beat Virginia in the NCAA tournament, but they found a way to win them all and win the championship. But in that game, you had a lot of veterans that knew how to play Virginia. Not knew how to play like they, they had cracked the code. Virginia's still really hard to beat, and they were hard to beat in that game. But they didn't get rattled if they went four or five possessions without scoring. They still got, they still worked the ball around, knew what they were, knew what to expect, and took good shots. And a guy like David Nichols came off the bench and uh, I think scored twelve or fourteen. He had a really nice game, especially in the second half, to kind of extend the lead and win the game. I don't know that Florida State has those guys. Like these guys are good, obviously, but how is Patrick Williams going to handle facing a defense like that? He's never seen it. A lot of these guys just don't have any any experience with with playing Virginia. Trent does, MJ does, Devin, eh, sort of. He might have played 14 minutes against them last year. So how are those guys going to – how are the, the the new guys, the Anthony Polites, the Devin Vassells, guys that haven't played much against Virginia, how are they going to handle it? I just don't get it. Like, what is so special about this pack line defense that you just – no one can figure it. I mean, people can figure it out and beat Virginia, but, like, no one's ever going to end up scoring, like, 87 on them in regulation. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think part of it, honestly – is uh, the reputation precedes Virginia in some of these games, and they're they're thought of as such a good defensive team that maybe they grab and hold and turn a little bit and never get called for it. Like Florida State in that Wake Forest game the other night, I mean they should have been up by twenty five at the half if they would have if they either would have stopped fouling or getting stop getting called for fouls. Mm. Virginia's never going to give up twenty two free throws in a half ever. They're just not referees are just not going to call them for fouls. I think. But also, um, you know, they're really good, and they teach it really well. And they, they kind of pack everything in. They make you take contested jumpers. That's what they want you to do. And they're very good at rebounding, too. But I don't know. It is weird I, I because um, – like Why don't more teams run it then? It just is it – I mean, it's, well, it's, it's not like, it. a, it's not like uh, a, well, I'm it's, not trying to advocate on behalf yeah. of it. I'm just saying it's one of those things where it's not like you need a special personnel. Everybody would love to be able to run a 4-3 and a 3-4 in college football. But it's just – I mean, no one has the, the ability to, you know – I mean, they, some teams have the ability, but it's hard to go – hard to be, really be multiple. You need a certain kind of guy to run a 3-4. Yeah. You know, like you don't need a certain kind of guy, I think, to play a pack line defense. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I mean, you need to be pretty strong. You need to be quick. You need to be able to contest. They, but, they're no, they're not like – it's not like they have a blueprint of body types that they recruit to. Yeah. You know, Florida State does. He Leonard likes them long and lanky. Like, he likes length on the perimeter. He makes it hard. He wants to be in the passing lanes. Um, but man, it, it it is weird. It is odd. But more, it's not just that they they always lead the nation scoring defense. One because they're really good at defense, and two they play at the pace of a de- dying snail, and it's really hard to watch. And I really wish I was hoping. I'm hoping that and it, that Bennett gets tired at, of coaching at Virginia. He's already won a national title. He's made them a top ten program. Although they're not ranked right now, they'll they'll get to the tournament. This is a rebuilding year for them. And then he'll just get bored and want to go to the NBA. And so we can get him out of this conference because I'm tired of watching it. Tired of, wa- I'm tired of watching it. Tired of watching it. I don't feel like the NBA is going to be welcoming that kind of uh, well, style but of you play. can't you can't play it too slow in the NBA. You know what I mean? There's the shot clock. You got too many good athletes. But like, I wouldn't mind. Me personally, I'm a Hawks fan. I would love the Hawks to to hire him because the Haw- Trey Young. You're always going to be able to score with Trey Young and those guys. You just are. But their defense is horrific. They're never going to be able to win if they keep playing defense like that. So get a defensive whiz in there. Maybe you can turn them around. Just get them out of the ACC. Paul Johnson's gone. Now the last thing we got to get rid of is Tony Bennett in Virginia. And they're good. I mean, look, he's good. No, you know, kudos to him. He's a great coach. It's just it's a hard style to watch, in my opinion. So I mean, like most things when it comes to basketball, just knock down your shots, right? Hey, that's all you got to do, kids. Kids, just knock down your shots. Don't turn the ball over. Try to turn them over a little bit. Get out and transition. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be like the first team to 46 is going to win this game. Um, and I know they're – I think they're, they've lost two in a row, which I don't think is good for Florida State. Yeah. I think that they, this, this is a proud program. They're not used to losing two in a row, much less three in a row. They're going to play harder than they have all season. 
because uh, they don't like being doubted. They don't like being out of the rankings. They got something to prove. Um, so it's going to be a real challenge for Florida State to answer that, to, to respond. And, uh, yeah, make your shots. Get to the free throw line if you can and get out in transition. All right. I know we're a day late. Uh, do you have any thoughts about the national championship game? I mean, no, it's not Florida State-centric in his wake-up war chant. Um, big basketball game. We'll be there. We'll have post-game coverage and sure. all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, it was an entertaining game. I thought if Lawrence had played well, I don't think he played well at all. I was really disappointed yeah. in the way he played. And he's obviously a very good player, but he missed a lot of throws that he normally makes and needs to make. But – I get – if Clemson would have scored 42, I think LSU would have scored 55. If Clemson had scored 50, I think LSU would have scored 64. You know what I mean? It just right. felt like it was that game. I, I think I think the, the score was indicative of probably the difference in the two teams, and I think Clemson's very good. But, um, I mean, I that offense that LSU has, I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen anything like it. 2013 FSU is the closest I've seen. It, the difference to me between the two, the two offenses is that 2013 FSU did they played at a slow pace and still scored all those points like it was just a marvel how efficient that 2013 Florida State offense was but it didn't play the defensive talent that this team did all year like they put up what 40 38 on Georgia Georgia's got a had a great defense Florida had a good defense and they ripped through Florida they ripped through Brent Venables I don't think I've ever – I don't know that I've ever seen an offense quite like that. I'm, I'm certainly not going to sit here and say – I know people – it's always the recency bias. We always want to crown somebody as the best of all time. I certainly didn't watch – LA, and I watched a lot of their games this year. I don't think I ever watched them and go, man, this might be the best team of all time. Yeah. It could be the best offense of all time. Just results. And then that kid, he threw 60 touchdown passes like in the SEC yeah. against real teams. Um. And he, he completed like 76% of his passes. And it wasn't like he was dinking and dunking. Yeah. I mean, he was throwing deep the whole time. In that game, he made a couple throws where you're like, man, I'm sorry. Is it A.J. Terrell, the cornerback yeah. from Clemson? Eight? Like, was it eight? Yeah. Eight? Golly. It's like, eight. sorry, dude, man. You're, you're, that's actually pretty good coverage. Yeah. What are you going to do? You could have, I guess you could have tackled him before he caught it. But other than that, man, those are just dimes. And it's not like he had a – Totally clean pocket all the time. So many of his throws are on the run from like different, you know, like yeah. throwing oh, platforms. He, can, he and can move and he can. He's just, I, he was, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a jump like that. He was just so pedestrian yeah. last year. You're like, oh, here's Danny Etling part two. It's just another yeah. like, white like, great, quarterback man. in the big gonna throw. He threw 16 touchdowns and five picks and he threw for like 2,800 yards. You're like, okay, man. He, he, he threw for 5,700 yards and 60 touchdowns and five interceptions or six interceptions. Um, and, and I think Clemson, they had the one interception they dropped, which could have been a pick six. That uh, kid read it perfectly yeah. um, and just dropped it. Other than that, I, I, I did, it wasn't like Ella, you know, they didn't, they didn't have a lot of missed opportunities on defense. I thought they actually played pretty well. You know, they, yeah. in the second quarter, they didn't. Things got out of hand. But I think LSU had like probably four or five three and outs. It was just – what I was really disappointed in, on, on, honestly, and I wasn't rooting for Clemson, I thought Dabo was kind of a big baby in the first half. Like, he got down at LSU 35 three times and didn't go for it once. One was a fourth and 18, I get. So he punted from, like, their 38. He punted from their 40 on, like, a fourth and four. And then he, he attempted and made a 53-yard field goal on fourth and three. It's like, man, have you watched LSU this year? I know you have confidence in your guys and Venables. But you you got to go score some points, man. You're on their side of the field. You're at their 30 or 35. Go try to score a touchdown. But that, that, other than that, yeah, I don't think it was. It wasn't like Dabo got poorly, poorly coached. It's just that the, the better team won. Yeah, it's, I'm never. I'm still. I'm still that guy, man. I, I miss football. I don't know what I'm watching anymore. Just the wide open craziness of it all. Um, yeah, I would never think about going for it like on fourth and four. It's a lot. Of, that's a lot. That's a lot of. That's a lot of. Uh, it's a lot of a lot of grass you got to cover. Fake grass. I mean, come on, but man. you know, I mean, you. you but you averaged like I'm, six yards of play. You were averaging six or seven. You were averaging six yards of play in that game, but you're Clemson. You've got all these weapons, and you're at the thirty-seven. And I know you've got a good defense, and you trust them. And I think it might have even worked out where they pinned them one time, mm -hmm. and then they got the ball back on a short punt, and went down and kicked and scored a touchdown. But I just think I, I hate I hate football coaches that do that. I hate it. I hate I, I just hate coaching scared. You get so many possessions, man, and you've got Trevor Lawrence. 
Go try to win the game with your offense. I, I don't know. I would always – I'm not one of those guys that, <clears throat> excuse me, that thinks you should go – you should never kick ever. No. Like, even if it's if it's fourth and four from your own 26, go for it. Obviously not. But when you're on their side of the field, you're playing that kind of offense. You know you're going to need some points. I just – I don't understand punting it and kicking long field goals. It just the <clears throat> – I don't know how much better an offense can play than LSU, so maybe that's a silver lining for me. Uh, it's just the way – it's just there's – like, legends are erased every year, it feels like. Um, like That 2013 FSU football team has no relevancy to the national discussion anymore. I mean, Florida State fans will hang on to it. That was a really damn good team. We saw what we saw with our own two eyes. Right. And, you know, there was nothing fake about it. There was no smoke and mirrors about it. No one outside of the circle is going to talk about that team as like a best-ever team. You know, they're, they're so quickly forgotten. Everyone's forgotten. Oh, it's, yeah, that's um, how it works now. Um, well, and you saw the – except when they're doing ranking the top 150 college football players, then it's everybody from the 70s. I guess that, yeah. That's in the, the early 80s. The offset of it. Um, but, you know, I was thinking about that because when, when, when the subject of best team of all time comes up, I, does Alab- the, all, it's like all the Alabama championships run together. I don't even know which was the best Alabama team. I'm I mean, sure it, think, it probably had a loss, whichever one it was. I think 2009, I think the one that beat Texas in the Rose Bowl, I think they were undefeated. They were, but, like, they barely beat a Colt mccoy Texas team. Yeah, it's a national title game. I mean, Florida State barely no, beat I know. a Nick Marshall-Auburn team. I mean, who's Nick Marshall? But, I mean, I wouldn't – but, like, I would, I would assume Alabama fans think one of those other teams was better than that team, I guess is my point. You know what I mean? Like maybe the one that had uh, Julio Jones or something. Well, Julio was on that team. I oh think. yeah, but maybe the one that had Calvin Ridley, or maybe the one that had uh, uh, destroyed Notre Dame in a championship game. Tua coming in that that team. I mean, I'm sure there are more guys drafted off other teams than that 2009 team. So <clears throat> yeah, I, I just it's it's odd when you look at uh, college football and and going back through history. I I won't ever forget the 2013 team. I don't think anybody listening to this will. Um, it just seems. You watch that game Monday night, and you're like, man, it just seems so far away. Yeah. It was only six years ago, but it feels so, – part of the time – some of the time it feels like it was part of the 90s dynasty. Like it just seems so far uh, far ago, far ago. You know, there, I was watching Long around ago. I was watching around the horn, and they're talking about, you know, Joe Burrow. Was this the, the single greatest season from a quarterback that we've ever seen? And I think Tim Kalashaw, who works for Dallas, for a paper in Dallas, and he seems, you know, seems pretty well-versed in, in everything <laughs> – was just talking about he doesn't remember anybody having this good of a season probably and if and if it's not Burrow then it's probably we'd have to go a few years back and I'm like oh look, represent James Winston is like Cam Newton 2010 it's just that that 13 team I don't know how much of it is is Jameis or the fact that the the players that have gone to the NFL really haven't shown maybe as brighter as other teams or maybe the fact that Jimbo left and Jimbo sucks at A and M and um, that's what that for some reason that, that's what I was thinking the whole time just watching the the LSU just the way they played I'm just like everyone's going to talk about this LSU team like there's no way any team could beat them or like there's no defense that could slow them down or there's no offense that could have that could have kept up with them and I'm like Florida State could have kept up with them oh yeah 13 could have easily could, could, could beat that could beat that they could play 10 times and they they it'd it be a be five, 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 five split yeah and I do agree with that I do think that I mean you, you nobody slowed down Florida State except for a team that apparently had their signals everybody else Florida State ran just straight through and um and also you had a, an entire defense that was going to the nfl some that are all pro type caliber players in your secondary that would have been a nice matchup to see you know what i mean um now lsu would have hit some plays but uh florida state would have made it a little more difficult i think for because i would have liked to see last year's clemson team versus this this lsu team because that defensive line was yeah. unblockable and so the, the Clemson's it's, – it's just remarkable what Venables did, man. I mean, they the allow so much talent. I don't know how many NFL guys are on that defense. I'm sure a few. Obviously, 11 is a freak. But, you know, and they still managed to have five or six three and outs against LSU. They just – I don't think they were quite good enough in the secondary. And they weren't able to – it didn't seem to establish a lot of pressure up front when they rushed three. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know how many of those guys are first-round – future first-round guys, and they had – would they have two or three of them last year? So, no, I mean, LSU will go down. They should. They went 15-0. and They scored 700 points. The kid threw 60 touchdowns. It is one of the best teams of all time, but nobody can say definitively it's better than the 13 Florida State team or the 2001 Miami team or the one of the USC teams from earlier, 03 or 04. 
It, it belongs in the conversation, though. It's just I think the conversation gets bigger. So do I. I don't I feel do like we're think in the that, conversation for some I, I, It is it weird. It pisses me off. It is weird. It, it, um, people that know put Florida State in the conversation. But I think maybe part of it is the ACC, the lack of respect for the ACC maybe. I think um, it's the quarterback. I think it's the fact that nobody likes a quarterback. And I think if the, if the quarterback is doing really good in the NFL, I think would also help. For I mean, as stupid as that sounds, if are James you kidding? Is, he just threw for five thousand yards, buddy. He threw yeah. for thirty three touchdowns. What are you talking about? What do you mean he's not doing well in the NFL? You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're talking about um, thirty three. What else, what else he got to do? Like if he made the playoffs twice or so and, and won a playoff game by now, I think people start talking about that team more. I think it would, it would bring more notoriety to the to that team, but. Um, you know, whatever, that's the past. But you talk about watching the game just makes you feel like how far away that was. And I, I don't know if you're talking about just time-wise or just in terms of what Everything. this program has to do. Yeah. Just who, but who could have watched that game the other night that wasn't in the playoff this year and think, eh, we're good. You know, this, this offseason, yeah, we're going to get bigger and stronger and we'll be, we're, we, can, we can beat one of those teams. Maybe Alabama, but that was, a, that was elite level stuff. Yeah. That, those are two just great programs. It, it'll be interesting, though, with LSU. We talked about this on headlines. Like, you know, they were talking last night. I think Herb Street even said it. You know, I was at, a, I was at an establishment watching the game, and uh, Herb Street, and they had the volume on, Herb Street said something about, you know, there's no reason not to think that LSU can't be right back here next year. And there were like six people around me that were like, well, Joe Burrow's not going to be here, man. Joe Brady's not going to be and there Brady, either. And the, the passing game coordinator so left. It, after, it took him nine hours to Go say Tigers. I'm going back to the NFL. So it, it ain't like LSU's just straight up established now as a dominant program. This could have been a magical one-year wonder, much like Cam Newton in 2010. Yeah. I think Orgeron is better than Chiswick. I think Orgeron will get every player he wants in the state of Louisiana. So that's going to be a bit of a – uh, headache to deal with if you're trying to recruit those guys. They're going to have more talent than Auburn had. Um, but when Chizik, I think it was only two years later, Chizik got fired, right? Two or three. He got yeah, because Malzahn was 13. So yeah. yeah, he 11 and 12, and he's done. He just won a national championship. He went three and nine and 12. Yeah, right. It, it just fell off a cliff. Yeah. I, I don't see that happening at LSU. They're going to no. have too much talent. Um, but. I don't see this ever happening again. I don't think LSU is set up to just yeah, no. Alabama it or Clemson it. I would still say Clemson's the best program in the country. Alabama's number two. LSU's, you know, I don't know, in the top ten somewhere, interchangeable with other teams. They wow. just they just happen to have a magical run with an incredible quarterback. But it's, that's not sustainable because he's bouncing. And the guy that was apparently the savant – that turned the offense around is going to be with, in the NFC South But now. he wasn't calling the plays. Steve Ensminger yeah. was calling the plays. Sure. The yeah. guy that was – every time they showed him in the booth, he was dipping. He, he was <laughs> right. a guy. He's, that's the genius behind it all is uh, Red Man. Um, tobacco, obviously. So when you look at LSU and you look at, uh, you know, Florida – I think Florida State back when they had Jameis obviously was a little more sustainable because he returned for another year. Um, but I think it could be similar to that. Like I think Florida State – I think LSU is in the Florida State – uh, category of five or six years ago. Very good program. They got a transcendent dude to come lead the show and became an unbeatable team, but not an unbeatable program. Not a, It was a very good program. It never was a great program. It never got to those heights, the sustained heights of Clemson and Alabama, although we thought it was going to. It kind of was – it was hovering at pretty good, went to good, great, then back to pretty good for a couple of years. Now it's back where, you know, I don't even know what you'd call this, yeah. but average. <laughs> It went from great to good to butt average. So I think LSU could be in that uh, in that frame. But, yeah, I think they're a top-10 program. I, they're not the best team. They're not the best program in the country. They just had an unbelievable season. Yeah. And if they had Coach Avoid's personal, uh, you know, personal conflict and that kind of stuff, I'm sure he'll he'll keep rolling along. Unfortunately, uh, Jimbo. Credit uh, to him, though, for going to. and hiring Brady. That was yeah, a man. great, great hire. Obviously, oh, yeah. it was a it was a season-changing hire. It was a, pro, it was a life-changing hire yeah. for Ogeron. Um because he, yeah, it's what, what he he knew that they needed something else, and for him to go do that was great. And I think when you look back at why Florida State didn't last, a lot of it to me, we can say all we want about Jimbo and and the stuff off the field, and that's not to be dismissed. It is um, vital, and it, it I do think it affected him in a big way. But the coaching staff hires that he made or didn't make, the yeah. changes that he made and didn't make, I think you can point to that. It was not a national championship caliber assistant coaching staff, in my opinion. If Pruitt doesn't leave, they win 14. I just think if Pruitt doesn't leave, they win in 14 again. As 
creaky and leaky as the ship started looking in 14. I think yeah. Pruitt's still there. I, think, I still think that defense plays a little bit better, and that probably just lifts enough of the entire tide of the team. In if the, the def- Yeah, because if the defense plays better, then you're not the three seed having to play Oregon. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, we can all – they hit six turnovers or whatever. But, you know, the, I just think if they're playing Ohio State – a third well, string quarterback in defense. Sugar Bowl. It changes the yeah, way it you, changes everything. you approach everything. Yeah. So I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. That was that was a very good hire. It was his, wasn't his first choice, but he knocked it out of the park with his first two defensive coordinators. And then let's just say he he sack bunted with his next defensive coordinator. <laughs> he did not knock it out of the park. Safe to say. Well, here are some comments and stuff from the uh, Renegade Express. FSU Robert, wake up! Just wanted to kick things off saying thank you. Keep up the great work and go, Knowles. Robert, there you go, buddy. Thanks for saying that. It's nice. Uh, Ammo, Noel. What are y'all hearing about the major changes to off-season conditioning drills? I remember when Matt drills were so intense and dreaded, but brought 14 years of greatness. Well, that all changed, unfortunately, with, uh, oh, gosh, Devon Darling? Devon, DeVard. DeVard, darling, yeah, when he passed away. And I think that was the – I think, I'd yeah. have to go look it up. I think that was the end of the mat drills. Yeah. But, yeah, man, the, the people from the dynasty, um, you know, and you, you, you have to coach a different way now. And I'm not saying it's better or worse. It's just different. There's no way in 2019 – 2020, sorry, that you could have – 2020. A, 2020, that's easy to remember. That you could have a, uh, a, tr- a, a conditioning hour where you're, you know that you're, you're going to make these kids puke. And you know, there's there's going to be limits to the water you have apparently, and but when you when you hear those stories of the guys that went through that, it really did bring all of them Absolutely. together. They were all doing it. Um, I but I can't I can't in good faith comment on what the training habits were of the two previous regimes. I don't know. We weren't there. We'd see snippets under Jimbo. We never saw. I don't think we ever saw a second under Willie. Oh no, we saw the chase. Remember all the videos he mic'd up every coach. And if you in hindsight, if you go back and look at it, it it, it seems very. Did it seem like Matt drills? No. Yeah. Very. Uh... I know there was one. I do remember this. So I think it was. I think it was during the chase last year, where. Um, I guess the FSU football Twitter feed, I, I think it was the Twitter feed, put out the video of them all attempting field goals after one of the chase exam, Or maybe they were playing golf. I, I there don't was, remember. There's a great photo of Mickey Andrews playing golf. Like. But I, I think they were doing something like either kicking the field goals or fielding punts or taking or hitting golf clubs. This was after a 5-7 and seven season. Yeah. And instead of, like, putting out video of them busting their butt and sweating everywhere. Yeah. You have them goofing around at the chase. Now, that doesn't mean they didn't work before that. You know what right. I mean? But that's not a great look. Yeah. The fans don't want to see you having fun with a golf club. They want to see you working hard. And I just have to imagine that none of those guys after Matt drills in 1997 were like, hey, let's go kick field goals. <laughs> they were probably all like, I got to go home and puke and go to bed. So, you know, maybe that says something about the uh, – the, but we, we don't know. We, we don't know, and I, I'm not uh, – I, I don't have the credentials to say whether they work too hard or not, en- not hard enough, but it certainly didn't seem to pay off on the football field. I think there is something to be said about just the absolute horror show that those things – that the Matt drills were and, and what it does to bring a team together because yeah. – um, yeah, I mean, when, you, when you're when you put through that kind of meat grinder stuff together, like you really do become close. And you can try to do all the barbecue, come to my house, we're going to have dinner for everybody in the position group kind of stuff. And that, that that's cool. And I do think that's a good thing to do. But, man, like when you struggle together, it's like your best friends probably from college are the ones that you got into absolute crazy sort of situations with, you know, just like, like – Brawls in South Bend, stuff like that, or just you, up, that's a connection you'll always have. Well, you know, up till three a.m. and you got to get somebody home, and there's a final exam. Well, and you, yeah, and you just, hear the things about, and none of, either one of us have never been in combat, and hopefully yeah. never will. And I would never, ever, ever compare, literally, a to a, apples to apples, mat drills in combat. Well, like, like basic life training, or death. at least though. I but mean, basic training, you're yeah. right. That's where I was going. Basic training is a lot like Matt Drills in that sense, where you're trying to build morale because you got to go out. You're going out and fighting for real. This isn't you know, Kellen Winslow. I'm a soldier. Right. This isn't. These are real soldiers that are trying to defend us. And uh, criminal pr- prisoner number five four yeah, R. Right. So, <laughs> but I mean that that's that's a lot of it's that to build camaraderie, and that's you know I know the Florida State basketball team does it every summer. They're out in the at the beach volleyball. Maybe it's. Uh, Maybe it's the fall. Maybe it starts in August, August or September. But they're out at 5 a.m. in the sand pits of the beach volleyball team doing their conditioning. And it brings you together. You're going through it. 
And, you know, I, I, I assume, though, I'm not going to sit here and say that they didn't, they weren't busting it. I mean, I, they had to have been busting it the last two years. But we don't, to answer the question very long-windedly, we don't know, but we'll find out. Well, you know. About the differences in, in, the, in the training. Well, I was told this the other day that, you know, apparently people around the program that had been here for a few years uh, had kind of were watching maybe some of the, the mat drills or some of the conditioning drills that they're doing right now. Because if you see, there was a video that came out a few days ago with Norvell yeah. talking to the guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess some of the people that were watching it or, or, you know, got to see some of it made kind of the comment about, wow, man, this is – this looks a lot better, man. This is a lot different. This is this looks this looks really good, kind of a thing. And apparently, Norvell had like a retort of like, "Man, this is not like no. This is this is like the not the furthest thing from good, but this is nowhere near where this thing has to be." And like, right. and not like kind of, and the way it was kind of told to me, it didn't seem like it was one of those like I'm trying to you know act like you know I've I've got them the oracle. I know what every the perfect the, the perfect sort of mentalities, but one of those things of just like this is. You know, there's bad habits that need that need to be changed, and this is nowhere close to what it, it needs to be, kind of a thing. So, um, you know, we don't have a direct sort of eye to the sky on this one, or what have you. But I mean, just remember being hearing that, because I was like, even seeing the little twenty second snippet video, I'm just like, man, it looks at least a little more spirit out there, like yeah. guys yelling and encouraging each other on. Um, and we'll see. Uh, you know, we'll get to talk to players at some point during spring practice, and we'll we'll certainly ask them the differences. Um. And hopefully, you know, they're, uh, they are they pay dividends on the field in uh, September. Yeah. So see, I actually went out with a girl the other night. Here and, we go. Um, she's in med school, and she's got like she's befriended all these people. And she's talking about how like they're they're like some of her best friends. I'm like, how long have you been in Tallahassee? She's only been here for like a few months. I'm like, well, I guess it's that whole fact that like you everyone is just being absolutely tortured by having to stay up all night and study right. and cram for like. And I'm just like, yeah, that's how you know, that's how it happens with like football teams, right? Like you're in the you're in the crap together. That's why yeah. you all come together like that. It's kind of like you having to sit on a couch with me for like an hour every. People single have day. no idea what this is like. <laughs> I think I feel like they under you know they understand. I, I feel like they know that it's it's not easy, but they don't have re- really any idea. Um, this is a part of Parents Corner. We need to get like a some sort of like parenting company i don't know like graco or like gerber maybe to sponsor gerber yeah, <laughs> yeah there you go. go sure uh this comes from mad amcz wake up missing the daily shows but you guys deserve some time off after a crazy coaching search and a riveting bowl game in el paso right very riveting uh cory my 10 year old son is playing his second season of little league double mm-hmm. a minors coach pitch he has potential wants to get better do you work with brady at home if so what drills do you do also, if you do get Brady a phone, it is a great, in all caps, great punishment tool because my son hates, all caps, hates when it's taken away. He'll do any chore you want in order to get the phone back. Yeah, that's that's the that's the thing I get told the most from parents is uh, how great a deterrent it is for bad behavior is yeah. to take that phone away. So I'm going to take that phone away and take it for a month or whatever Ooh. you whatever you would uh, threaten to do. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm sure that will be uh, part of the deal moving forward. As far as hitting drills, man, he, he practices a lot, so I don't do a ton of hitting drills with him. And quite frankly, so if you listen to this show, you know that uh, sometime last fall he had that game where he went 0 for 5 with five strikeouts. Yeah. And I had been working with him a lot before that. And I would gotten so far into his head telling him, put your hands here, put your you – don't stride this far, blah, 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 that it was just complete uh, – he was paralyzed – and he just – he couldn't hit. Like, he was a better hitter when he was seven. He wouldn't have swung and missed at any of those balls when he was seven. But he was swinging through everything as a – at that time, a 10-year-old. So, I know we don't all have – you know, not everybody has a, a ton of money to do something like this. But I took him to a hitting instructor. Um, it was $35. I don't know what they would be around here, but I know there are some great facilities in Tallahassee. But I, I, I guess we don't know where he's from. Um, Naples. Okay, well, it's, it's Italy. Florida, man. You, Naples, Italy. That'd be a little harder. Um, hey, you like the baseball? <laughs> oh. You want to swing at the bat? Um, I, just take. There's got to be great, great instructors some in, in, in Naples. It's Florida, so go find him one, and maybe just once a week. And that guy knows more than we do. And I, I tried to watch YouTube videos, and none of it worked. But this guy has a way of of coaching kids and coaching Brady that. He got him out of that funk in the matter of like two lessons. Is it, he still going to him? He hasn't gone to him in a couple months because it's been it hasn't been baseball season. I didn't want to like 
wear them out with baseball because yeah. that really was a, a concern in the fall because it was way too much baseball. That didn't help. But, uh, but yeah, he'll start going back to them. But, yeah, I would do that. I, that And what happens when you do, and I know we'll move on. Nobody's, nobody's really interested in this except Parents for us Parents brought to you by Gerber. Yeah. But uh, once you watch the hitting lessons. You watch the drills. You see what the guy's trying to teach your son. Even take video of it. And then occasionally, if you're at home and you got 10 minutes to kill, go work at it. Because you're not going to be able to go take him to a hitting coach every day. He's 10. Why would anybody do that? He's not a high school or college player. But every other day or something, you can go out in the yard or go out in the garage and try to recreate the drills that he was doing with that guy for 10, 15 minutes. Now, what kind of setup do you have in Georgia for him? Like, is the, I is just the have garage a like the lab? Is no, the I, have a, I, there's a, I have a living room that doesn't have anything, to, any furniture in it. You've been there. Yeah. Right when you walk in, right in that left room, there's nothing there. Yeah, it's like yeah, a little yeah. office space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a tee set up. Okay. And uh, I have a little – I have wiffle balls that I put on the tee and just do it that way. Because he's hitting the wiffle ball into the wall, and I don't care. It's not going to do too much damage. Yeah, but we can't practice with a wiffle ball. It's like practicing with a Nerf football. No, and man. then he just – I mean, he has so many practices, man, that it was just – it was just – it was pointless to do too much. Maxwell Gibbs from New York City, New York. MG. Hello, gents. What do you believe the keys will be to Coach Ham and the basketball team winning the ACC regular season title for the first time ever? Uh, Make your shots. There you go. Make your shots. Um, be able to withstand what's having the target on your back. Florida State's, you know, they've been a very good program. Really, since they've been a decent to good program since Leonard got here. The last four years, they've been very good. Top 10, top 15-ish. There aren't many other top 10, top 15-ish teams in this conference right now. There's like two. It's Duke and Louisville. So all these teams are going to be trying to get into the tournament. And to get in the tournament, beating Florida State would be a huge win on their resume. Huge. Like, they're playing for their post, especially when you get to February. These teams will be playing, a lot of them will be playing for their postseason lives, knowing that a win against you could be what gets them into the tournament. You've got to be able to handle that and play hard and, and answer that. I think, that's, I think that's a big key is being able to respond um, to, to that kind of pressure that comes from other teams playing is treating you like a Duke or a Carolina. Also, cool. you, you know – you're going to have to probably beat Duke at Duke, and that's going to be really hard. Yeah. Hopefully North Carolina is still struggling when you play them too. Yeah, that's coming uh, up in a couple weeks, right? Yeah, they're coming here though. Yeah, in North Carolina looks awful. They just had their streak Man. broken with Clemson. I oh, feel for Roy Williams talking about like he should be fired. And oh, yeah. It's, like, you I can failed, tell he's, I failed my team. You can tell he's not – He's number one, he's not used to handling – he's not used to losing like this, but he's also not used to not having like – you know, four of the top nine players in the conference. He doesn't have that right now. His best player, his lottery pick, hasn't played in a month. And he hasn't really – they have not responded to that well. But – Cole Anthony. When Cole Anthony comes back, if he comes back, you know, they they're, they could still be a tournament team. He's really good. Really, really good. He could change almost everything. Well, I mean, so I think they've got, well, like three guys are probably going – and I, I almost feel this is kind of – a little bit reckless to maybe throw MJ into the right mix there. there. You see that Florida State? They just showed on as we're talking. They had a graphic about the best te- the the teams with the best records against top twenty five teams this season. Baylor's five and zero, and Florida State and Duke are tied for second at three and zero. Nice. Yep. It's crazy. I was like, yeah, Baylor's like San Diego State's in the top five, I think, or at least yeah, Baylor and say a uh, top ten maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, Man, Florida it's a crazy. Florida State's a, a fifty-five to one. There, there's the odds for Florida State to win a national championship is fifty-five to one. So what I, I let did, somebody ride on that. What I did was uh, uh, Pearl Jam tickets were a uh, Pearl Jam tour was just announced yesterday. Um, I'll, I'll let people. I'll let this secret out of the bag because I already told her about it. My idea. I, Stephanie's birthday was in November. I came up with an awesome idea for it. Did I tell you? I remember there was like some. So my was idea gonna, was to to take her to a Pearl Jam concert. Okay. At Wrigley Field, be. at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Oh, that was my idea because there were all these rumors that Pearl Jam was going to be going on tour in 2020, but it wasn't official, okay. not a U.S. tour. So I couldn't tell her, oh. "Hey, we're doing this," because I didn't know if it was official. So I kept just stringing her along and saying, "You'll see." And she's like, "Hey, will I get a birthday present for Christmas? Will I get a birthday present for Valentine's Day?" She's oh. been kind of bothering me about it for a while. Deservedly so. Sure, sure. Uh, it was a little over the top at times. <laughs> Might have, might have caused a few, uh, uh, you know, cross, just trust the cross process. words. Just yeah, the process. Just, I know that I'm going to do something. But anyway, so on Monday, it came out that they, they released at least the spring dates. 
and one of them is in uh, is in Nashville in April. And I thought it was the Saturday of the Final Four. It's not. It's the Thursday of the Final Four. But still, so that's the only one I'm going to drive to, so that's where we're going. Okay. So I, I, we think. I have a 99% chance of getting them. I joined the club, the Pearl Jam fan club, oh, right. like back in November, just to get access okay. to the tickets. So I think I'm going to get tickets to that Nashville game. But I told her, this was when I thought it was still on the Saturday. I was like, look, there is a chance that Florida State will be in the Final Four and – you know, then we won't be able to go to this. And I would have never – it would have never even come out of my mouth in recent <laughs> – right. when, when have I ever said, hey, by the way, right. calm down. There's a chance Florida State's going to be in the Final Four. It, that just doesn't – that's not a thought that occurs to you. But the way this team plays, um, where it can get hot, and I think it, it literally can beat anyone in the country. And then um, the fact that there's no other great teams. Yeah. Like you, you know, you get hot at the right time, dude. You could get, you could win four games and get to the tournament and get to the final four. But yeah, I, and she's like, "Well, does that mean I have to start rooting against Florida State?" And I'm like, "No, don't do that, because you rooted against Florida State not to do well in baseball." Because I kept telling you, because uh, I don't, she, yeah, she didn't want me to be gone for like a week or yeah. eight days back in June when, and I was like, "Look, I'm gonna be in Athens. It'll be a two day trip, right. maybe three days. They're not winning that regional. You're fine." Yeah. Of course they do that. We're going – look, I know what I said last week. They have no chance to beat LSU in Baton Rouge. None. <laughs> I've watched this team all year. It's not happening. They don't hit the ball all that well. They got one – they got – well, they had – Parrish was coming on, but they've only got one real proven pitcher. I don't see this happening. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And then, yeah, they, they, sweep, they sweep LSU and we go to Omaha. But we she ended up going to Omaha with us, and we made it a, we made a nice trip. But anyway, the point was she was cheering – she was rooting against Florida State for her own personal interest in those well, scenarios, that's and what it you backfired. Do. Why would you do that? So I was that? like, "Hey, if you don't want Florida State to go to the Final Four, you better start rooting for them because every time you yeah. root against them, they're going to go on a roll." All right. Oh uh, well, to that point, I mean, I guess on a more serious note, kind of though. So, like, Trent, Devin, and MJ are those like the three? I don't want to say best players, but like, will this team go as far as those three will carry them? Cause my, my whole thing is in terms of like, if they're going to be able to win this or that and the other. Like, two of those three guys need to have good nights. Like all yeah. three of them cannot be – I think – well, I should say two of them cannot go cold. Right. One of them can have a bad game of those three. Unless, like, Patrick Williams does like a, has a really remarkable game, which could happen. I mean, he's, he's probably getting better every single time we see him out on the floor. But like, is that kind of one of the things maybe to look for if you're if you're kind of a casual? Yeah, and I, and I wouldn't fan. even say about tonight because tonight is so different. It's Virginia is such a different, yeah. just such a different deal. Um, <clears throat> so don't judge their production just from what you see against Virginia. But yeah, moving forward, I'm really interested in MJ Walker because if he can be the guy he's been the last two games, if he can give you consistently 14 to 18 to 20 points and knock down big threes like he has, and also he's been aggressive going to the basket too. Man, that changes everything. Because you know, you kind of know what you're getting out of Devin and Trent. Trent. Yeah. Trent's Trent. Devin's a, you know, he's a very, very talented player. But if MJ plays at this level or close to this level, he's going to have some up and downs. It's just life. But if he can, if he can find some consistency with this kind of effort and production, well, you've got the best backcourt in the ACC. And in my thinking, probably one of the best in the country. With those three guys, because of what they do on both ends, mm. now, I, none of them are. Yeah, you know, I think Devin has a chance to be a, a, a probably a pretty good chance to be a first round pick. The other two don't. Um, they might some. They might find a way into the league. Devin will definitely be in the league, but they're not like um, McDonald's All American superstar talents yeah. coming out of high school. I know MJ well, was, was yeah. but they're not the guys where you like. They're not Zion and RJ yeah, Barrett. Yeah. Um, they're not gonna. They're not gonna combine for. They're not going to all average 20 points a game. But what they can do is if they average 45 between them or 44 between them and they do what they do on the other end, man, that's a that's a tough deal. There there aren't there aren't many colleges that have, number one, a guy like Trent Forrest who does it on both ends of the court and you know isn't going to be overwhelmed by any situation. And then Vassell is just a freak, man. Yeah. He leads the team in block shots. He's a guard. <laughs> he leads the team in block shots and steals yeah. and points. Like, that's incredible. And then MJ has had probably his two best games of the year the last two games. So if he can build on that, now you're looking at three. You're looking at two for sure with Vassell and Trent. You're looking at two all-eight, all-conference caliber type players. And MJ is a guy that could go for 20 on a given night. The problem with MJ is he can't go 0 for 9 another night. You know, he's yeah. got to find that consistency. What, what's what been kind of – what was his, his deal last year, he had a couple games at Miami where he, where he hit a bunch of threes. 
He had some really nice games and some nice moments. Louisville, I think, last year at home, he had a really nice game. But then there are other moments where he, you know, he'll go one for seven yeah. and just not be a factor offensively. You can't have that. Well, that, last year they could they could withstand that because they had so many other weapons. This year they can't. Well, like to, to my point then, so like if Trent and Devin, I mean, can can Trent and Devin do enough to pick up the slack of MJ? Yeah, I think so against against most ACC teams, but not all of them. But if you're going to make a like, if we're talking about the Final Four and making a run. Oh and, yeah. and having a special all season. All three of them need to be. If those three guys get going. Man, that's a that's just tough, man. Devin can really shoot and can score and can get deflections and steals. Trent's Trent just Gotta does everything. Got to get to the cup. And MJ can really shoot. When MJ's shooting, man, he's he's a uh, he's a very good college basketball player. And are they going to keep bringing him off the bench? Is he kind of like no? He'll he started. He'll he'll start uh, from here on out. But uh, yeah, it was it was nice when he did he did come off the bench for that like, one game. It's kind of like Kevin Gelly almost, you know. Bring bring your. Uh, no, they do that with Patrick Williams. Yeah. I'm telling you, folks, I'm just going to say this. I don't know how likely it is, and I know it's not a basketball-centric show, but if they can do whatever it takes, and I know it sounds odd because I think Patrick Williams is averaging like eight and a half points per game, but he's an NBA prospect, and he's showing up on my mock draft list because he's incredible talent. Um, I wouldn't draft him at all if I was in a top 15 or 20 because I don't know how – only because he hasn't proven it yet. You know, I'd, I would want to see him as a sophomore where he gets more minutes and well, it's production. January. Let's see what he does in the next Exactly season. right. But there's a chance these could be the last three months you have Patrick Williams and Devin Vassell. As long, and it's definitely the last three months you have Trent Forrest. But if, Vassell, if they can get Vassell and Patrick Williams, who I think has just turned 18, he's a young, young kid. If those dudes come back next year with what they got coming in and what they got returning, Scotty. you're looking at – you're looking at a probably top ten, top eight, top five preseason yeah. team in a team that could be the best that Leonard ever had. And if we want to start a GoFundMe, um, I'm not, obviously I, I never advocate cheating right. or paying kids under the table. But if y'all want to start a GoFundMe to make sure Patrick Williams and Devin Vassell stay here for one more year and make it worth their while, I think that's a good play. I think they're, that's a really good play. Like Terrence Mann come over here, like oh, like Odell Beckham Jr. and start giving like you know, how about two hundred dollar handshakes? So in front of and, and then they tried to say that it was fake money. I don't know. Is that yeah? What so saying? so they did a story. Of the the advocate asked LSU, like, do y'all have a comment on this? And the LSU uh, spokesman's like, well, the money was fake. Man, what is Odell? How where's o, where's Odell Beckham getting fake money? It looks really real. It does. So then is it counterfeit? Is Odell about to be arrested? <laughs> like, that looks so real that it's real. <laughs> That's real money. It could be used in a casino, I'm sure. Maybe not a casino, but at a gas station if it's not real. But I think it's real. Gas station. Yeah, yeah, they'll take anything. <laughs> they'll take anything. You give them a bone saw, they'll give you something. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, – I think LSU might want to tell OBJ, like, hey, man, do you have to do that? you have to do that in the middle of the field? Right. The middle of the field, you have to start giving kids wads of cash. What if there are players that are going to declare? I guess could, could they retroactively t try to take away that championship? I mean, if you're going to give money to Joe Burrow, like Joe Burrow's gone, he's done. That's a good question. It's after like, season's over, game's over. Yeah, somebody uh, gave him a cigar. He didn't buy that. Is that an NCAA violation? He was smoking that thing. I know he didn't buy it. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I guess uh, if they're if they're going pro anyway, do whatever you want. And uh, last one, uh, running Noel, uh, Deb did uh, mention, there was another one from Maxwell because we'll get to, but she just wanted to say Happy New Year. Uh, really liked El Paso. Great time. Very impressed with Mike Norvell. I think we struck gold again. Um, oh, again, I mean, like Bobby Gold. I mean, definitely not Willie Gold. Well, uh, super proud of men's and women's hoops. Final four for both. Baseball's ranked 12th. Softball number one recruiting class. It is glorious to be a seminal. That is true. It is. And I, I'm, well, I shouldn't say that, but I am, I am fired up about Norvell. I'm getting more fired up by the day. We talked about it on headlines, just our, our thoughts of the coaching staff. How much it's of that, sharp, though, man. is because of how bad it was? That, that, it gives it the, That's it kind gives of it that at, perspective yeah. and that context. My sugar high is coming down a but little bit. But don't you think that, like, I think Florida State is a place where as long as you, you have comp – if you have good coaches at a place like Florida State, like they did from 10 to 14, yeah. man, you see what happens. You see what happens. I mean, I, I don't think th – these guys are all sharp, they're, and they're all upwardly mobile, which is a term we use a lot on headlines about how Norvell wants guys that are going to be co head coaches one day. Yeah. And I think in that room there are three or four dudes that we talk to that are going to be head coaches either again or in their future for the first time. Who? I mean, I, mean, I think Atkins for sure is going to be a head coach at some point. I think uh, – man, I, I think rushing could be one. I think Dillingham will definitely be one. 
I mean, I, I, as long as Florida State – well, look, it all depends on what oh, happens yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But if they do well here, yeah. And you remember you talked about the 90s dynasty. Well, yeah, when did that crumble? When they got – when they got – when they went from – very good assistants who were so good they became head coaches at Power Five schools to J- the Jeff Bowdens of the world, Jody and the, the Daryl Dickies and the Jody Allens of the world. You, th- that those were bad coaching staffs. But when Florida State has had good coaching staffs in the last thirty years, they've always been really good. And I think this coaching staff is really good. And I think they know what they're doing. I think they're gonna that they're gonna they're gonna they're, everything about this coaching staff has me fired up. Has me fired up. Right. I don't think they're going to go into games and get completely outcoached. And that wasn't just a Willie Taggart thing. There was a lot of times where Charles Kelly was completely outcoached. So that becomes a Jimbo Fisher thing. And there were a lot of times where Jimbo Fisher had no real game plan. Even in 17, I know he had a freshman quarterback, but you're scoring 17 against Duke. You're scoring 20 against Wake. He couldn't figure it out either. I think you have the best coaching staff you've had in a long time. I'm fired up about it, man. I'm fired up. Um, well, so Maxwell said for laughs, what do you find more funny or funnier? He said more funnier. Oh, well, that's the both worlds. <laughs> Split the difference. Um, the lack of discipline and party culture that is being reported at Miami under Manny Diaz appearing to make him appear to be the next Willie Taggart or the fact that Willie's recruitment pitch at FAU is that he did not have the tools and infrastructure to be successful at FSU and that FAU has those resources in place. I can't confirm that. Yeah, I don't know if Willie would ever say that kind of – I mean, I'm I, I'm sure he's getting it from somewhere, but I don't know where, so uh-huh. I'd feel uncomfortable commenting on that necessarily. Because um, uh, I never heard I never heard firsthand that Willie was doing that. As far as the party culture at Miami, man, it, it doesn't matter. They're never going to be back. They could hire Nick Saban. That's not true. If they hired Nick Saban, they would be back pretty quickly. But other than that, they're not going to be back. Got no worry, no reason to worry about those guys down there. The U is back. I did see he was on a radio show. Willie was in a radio show down in um, in Boca Raton, and they asked him about like you know, so how does this whole buyout thing work? Like you get like a big some, you get like a big chunk, you get like payments, and there was like a four or five page thread on the tribal council that was just like merciless. And like, oh, like, you know, hearing him, you know, chuckle about it, you know, really grinds my gears. And I listen to it. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm a big guy on tone. Like, I, I listen to people's tone. Right. And I, can, I think I can tell if people. And it was it was the most like, innocuous thing. He was just like, I'm getting it. Like, you know, next question kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. It wasn't like he was like, ha yeah. Like, you know, yeah, uh, I'm getting my money. Like, yeah, I walk out to the mailbox on the 1st and the 15th and laugh, laugh the entire way back up the, the driveway. And it was Cha ching, cha ching, yeah. cha ching. Yeah, he wasn't doing that. Yeah, yeah. he's if he's, he's if he doesn't handled. get all of it, he'll get most of it because that's just that's how it works. He's handling it well, I feel like, and he's got he's taking a whole bunch of guys away from us. Apparently, Demarcus Adams, Mark, Malcolm Lamar going FAU. Yeah, man, guys that couldn't play here, they can go roll down to Boca Raton, maybe make get some uh, playing time there. Um, and then last thing, somebody did tweet at me, or actually it was a direct message, uh, James Brinkley. Uh, Hi, I'm an everyday listener to the Wake Up War Champ podcast, not a subscriber yet. Which I probably shouldn't take your question. You need to change that, James. Well, I think he's a he's a military man. Looks like he's oh. a, his bio says U.S. Navy chief, and he's actually dressed up in that. So um, well, never mind, James. We'll Somebody, allow, well, we, we maybe we could we'll comp that. him. Well, we can't do that, but we'll allow. We'll get a, <laughs> okay. you get a free question on the Renegade okay. Express. That's <laughs> Even bad. better, great. Uh, not a subscriber, but I have a question as to why uh, you and Corey don't talk about Wyatt Rector when talking about possible quarterbacks for FSU this year. Go Knowles, love what you do. There's like a four page thread about Wyatt Rector. Some guy said he. You can actually go and read it if you're a subscriber. We don't want to give away everything that's on the Tribal Council uh, away for free. But that, that kind of be, became a little bit of a, a talking point of conversation having. But what I did want to say, and maybe kind of doubles back to the uh, this coaching staff, and you know we talked about in the last show about you know is the, the smarter bet a true freshman going to start or James Black being the starting quarterback. And I would I would be more than – shocked at any of those those cases happening, which I think there's a there's a good amount of shock, I think, if a true freshman starting at Florida State a quarterback. I really do think so. And I think there's a good amount of shock of James Blackman somehow in a, you know the third iteration of yeah. his career as yeah. a starting quarterback. But to me I think the 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 biggest shocking thing to me would be if Florida State doesn't get a like I don't know the, the proper adjective here. But a grad transfer quarterback. And that's something that we didn't even talk about. And we don't have any names and it's conjecture, but I 
with the way that Mike Norvell is kind of piecing everything together and all the, the, the detail-oriented sort of nature of the way he's put everything together, wouldn't it be absolutely crazy if he did not bring in another quarterback that's like day one ready in terms of eligibility and being able to go out there and compete? I mean, I wouldn't be... I'd be shocked if he goes to war with what he has. Right? I mean, I say, if he goes into the 2020 season with two tr- freshman quarterback, one guy that's not going to get here until July, Jordan Travis, who we don't know his capability, and then a guy that, frankly, is quite mercurial and hasn't really shown growth. Yeah, I mean, you got four scholarship guys in that room already, um, all underclassmen still, right? Like, James is still just going to be a junior. Um Maybe we'll see after the spring. No pressure, Mike. Do that, though. But maybe Free seeing advice. the – I mean, we, you would know by now, right? Wouldn't we know by now if somebody was transferring in for this semester? Yeah. So, it'll be after the spring. So, again, he might see what he has in the spring and goes, oh, no. Nope. Can't do that. Let's get that kid from Houston on the phone. Whatever you have to do. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, I, I wouldn't be – no, I wouldn't be shocked. I might be su- surprised. But I wouldn't be shocked. But I just don't – I mean, who who out there – Well, just they needed a running back. They got the kid from A&M. Yeah. They need an offensive lineman. They got the kid from FIU. They needed help a linebacker. They got the kid from Purdue. Why don't they go get that kid from Clemson? Go, go get Fo, – Fo, 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 Is that his name? Yeah. So, but remember, they got the number one quarterback in the country coming in to replace yeah, Trevor Lawrence. That guy's in the middle doing – why didn't he just he, – you know – He's got a leg up. He's been there for years. He's got a leg up on I him. I mean, again. well, yeah. Was he a wasn't he a five star kid too? Yeah, I think so. I mean, what are they do, how are they doing this? But anyway, maybe get that kid to transfer in. But although they're losing their OC, I mean, Jeff Scott's leaving, so that Fomachin, he's like, hey, man, just might as well start over in Tallahassee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not South Florida. Don't yeah. come here. Yeah. Go to go to Florida State. Uh, yeah, I guess I would be sub- I would be surprised if if another name doesn't come into that room. But I would not be stunned. I wouldn't be shocked. I would because. Be. I would have thought if it was going to be somebody, it would have been that kid from Memphis. He was eligible to do it. Yeah. He talked about doing it, and he didn't. Well, why is that? Why is that? Like, did Norvell not – does Norvell not want him to? Did Norvell not say don't worry about it? Does Norvell have something better that he thinks is coming up, coming down the line? Because it's just odd that if he was going to take a grad transfer, he wouldn't have taken that kid. Well, I'm sure he probably would have. I mean, I, it seems like – that kid's from Arizona. He, he left Arizona to go all the way to Memphis. I think it'd be almost kind of weird if he followed Mike. I mean, Norvell's not his dad. I mean, I'm sure he well, obviously has yeah. great respect for Mike Norvell. He followed him to Memphis. But, I mean, after what they just kind of accomplished, it's probably hard to walk away from that as well. I mean, remember yeah. when I was Florida State on the show, and you're going to, you know, nine wins at Florida State's going to take you somewhere probably better than nine wins at Memphis. But you probably think they can still win 11 games or win that conference again and go to another New Year's Six Bowl. And it's going to be uphill battle for Florida State to do that. So yeah, You're right. You're right. So, yeah, we'll, I guess we'll know about a a, trans, a possible transfer in April or May. Yeah. So, anyhow. All right, right after the Final Four. Um, we will have a show for you tomorrow. We'll get some more of the uh, questions uh, off the uh, Tribal Council. We'll give uh, our thoughts on the Virginia-Florida State game. Who do you think is going to win? I mean, I think Florida State will win, but nothing surprised me with Virginia. They're good. They're mad. Um, Florida State doesn't usually lose at home, but, you know, it's first one to 46. Just get to 46, get to 50 points, you have a good chance of winning. Oh, I wish I had something really cool to say before we left, but. No, we're done. He's scoring. That's it. That's, That's it. We're done. Up That's, it. That's the end of it. That's the end of the show. All right. Bye. If you want an adventure, you could climb a mountain or ride dune buggies through the desert. Or you could just head to your neighborhood Zaxby's. Introducing the Smokehouse Cheddar Barbecue and Southwest Chipotle Filet Sandwich Meals. They're brand new and they'll take your taste buds to wild and exciting new places. Both feature our famous hand-breaded chicken and they're both available for a limited time. Only at your neighborhood Zaxby's. And don't miss Jumanji The Next Level, only in theaters.